Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omelus and today I will review the fifth studio album by the indie rock band Death Cab for Cutie. I've reviewed their last album Transatlanticism or something. One of the weirdest album titles ever, but it is pretty much the best album, so it's kind of a it's kind of a double-edged sword in a way. And the album cover too, I love the album cover of that uh, of this record, you know, that trend set shit. Like a great cover with, you know, the, the beige background and the crow with the adorable, um, how do you call it? The fucking uh, knit, I, I suppose it is, knit, knitting. Like, uh, you know, the red knitting that he has on his uh, beak, that's adorable, so I love that, I love that cover. Um, this cover, however, is um, it, it kind of looks like a kind of a game simulator or something. Like you, you know, you're in a game and you know the environment. It, it kind of looks like a game environment in a way. Uh, you know, with the grass and uh, the red bushes and the kind of black city background. I guess I'm not sure where they photographed this, but it looks kind of unique I suppose. It is still like my second favorite album cover by the band and that's essentially what this album is. It's essentially a lesser trend set shit but it is it has a better title plan you know so or not per se better but it has an it has an easier to pronounce album title so there we go. It's just one word instead of that well trend set lent to system is also one word but fuck that word Great album though, but whatever. Uh, yeah, this is requested by Elijah something else because um, I believe, I, th I think it's a she though. Like probably the majority of Death Cab fans are girls because, you know, tender, crooner kind of guy, you know, nerdy. So they're, they're kind of like, Death Cab is kind of like a Weezer without the bite, I suppose. Without the the power pop, without the... The crunch, the the oomph, you know, without the oomph, I suppose. Although Weezer doesn't really have that themselves anymore, but they do kind of pop out here and there with an oomph here and there, that's why I love them. And that's why I like Def Cap, you know. I like Def Cap's arrangements, I like their songwriting style, I like their songs. But I don't like, you know, that they don't have that oomph that Weezer has. But, you know, they're two different bands. Weezer is an, all, you know, at heart, River said, you know, they are an alt rock band, and I'm not sure how this guy is called. Yeah, it doesn't say it anywhere, I believe so. Uh, ben Gibbard, like, yeah, I, I like Ben Gibbard, he's a, he's a nice guy, he's kind of a nerdy, kind of River Squomo kind of guy, but you know, uh, what's the thing? He never really did it for me, honestly. Like, yeah, he, he is a kind of a cute guy, and you know, he, he writes great songs, I think, but. It just doesn't have that um for me that Weezer has or something like that, so there we go. We have 11 songs, you know, it's kind of unfair to compare the band to Weezer, I suppose, but whatever. It's um, it's personal preference, preference, and you know, some people prefer Death Cab, but I think the majority of people prefer Weezer, like I do, so there we go. It's, ki it's kind of an out there comparison, but the similarities are there, though, so fuck off. <laughs> um, Although Death Cab doesn't have, you know, as much lows as Weezer, Weezer has the better highs, I suppose, which makes them, in my opinion, a better band, but whatever. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter, we're gonna, we're talking about Death Cab now, so there we go. First song is Marching Bands of Manhattan, this is a great kind of intro song, uh, entirely written by Ben Gibbard, he writes the majority of songs here, or on any Death Cab album, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, it kind of starts with like a uh, kind of like a Beatles Sgt. Peppers kind of thing where you know the drums are pretty st steady You have a kind of like a spoken word intro. The intro is pretty cool. It's pretty mellow It's pretty out there So I did like this intro bit and it was a pretty nice touch to record a pretty nice opening um, Yeah, then we get soul meets body which is a uh, very deep track on the record um, a lot of crooning on this track too a lot of great guitar riffs, a lot of great lead by Ben Gibbard, I suppose. Uh, very thought-provoking songwriting on this record. Very dark, very deep record. Definitely one of my favorites. Definitely my favorite so far. 
Yeah, and now that I look at the track listing, it is probably my favorite track. So yeah, there, there you go. It's pretty much the best song on the record. So let's go with that. Now we got Summer Skin, which is written by the entire band. Uh, ben Gibbard, Jason McGurr, and Chris Walla. Or I believe one person did, didn't write it. Nick Harmer, I suppose, who is the, who is the basis of the band. But he did write another song, so he makes up for that. Um, yeah, I honestly like the song. I think it's a bit all over the place, honestly. It is decent. It is three minutes long. It's kind of like uh, your summer jam, I suppose. So it is a nice song for that. Although, albeit a bit out there, a bit clunky, but it is a nice song to listen to. Then we get uh, different names for the same thing. Uh, this is a pretty funny song, it's five minutes long. I do think that the band has a good joke going on on here because, you know, they are saying that, um, you know, they're talking about a product and that product has multiple different names, diff different uh, pronunciations. Although it means the same thing, that's basically what they're saying. And I do really like the style and I like the concept of the song and I you know, like the arrangement of the song. But I, I'm kind of, I think it's kind of questionable to make a song out of this honestly. And it's also kind of questionable that the song is five minutes long. Those are two considerations that do kind of take away from the record honestly because yeah I'm just not that huge on the song. It is a nice song though, it is funny for the first couple of minutes but then eventually it kind of drags on and it just kind of you know fades I suppose so. It's a nice song, it's funny and you know it's, it's kind of a cheeky song so there we go. Speaking of cheeky songs we pretty much have the the signature song of uh, Death Cab, which is I will follow you into the fucking hell. I will follow you into the dark, which is I think their signature song. I'm not sure. Um, I do think that on Trent said they had a bit more, um, you know, more iconic songs, or not per se iconic, but just better, just plain old better. But I will follow you into the dark is pretty much like their signature song. Like I believe the music video. I haven't watched it fully, but I believe that Ben Gibbard is like sitting on his bed in, in an empty ass uh, college dorm or something. And he's just jamming out, you know, he's just playing guitar and there's like a creepy uh, like shadow coming out of the fucking cracks of, of his apartment room. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how the video goes again, but it is like, it is just pretty much like an acoustic kind of rendition of, you know, kind of a Simon and Garfunkel song or something. It kind of sounds like that, honestly. You know, it is just nice to listen to. It just sounds uh, pretty appealing. It is just a very, uh, you know, very nerdy yet very captivating song, which uh, you know perfectly encapsulates the whole vibe of Death Cap. You know, it perfectly encapsulates what they're all about. So definitely watch it if you haven't. If you're not into the band yet, then definitely begin with this song because it is pretty much a signature right there. Then we get your heart is an empty room. Uh, the this is the what's the thing? This is the fucking centerpiece of the record. Yeah, and this record kind of reminds me of uh, I'll follow you into the dark. Uh, it's a bit less iconic, honestly, and it's a bit less catchy, but it's still pretty good. I would say it's still uh, pretty captivating. It's still you know got me, and I would still say it's a pretty nice follow up to pretty much their signature song. Then we get someday, someday you will be loved and honestly this was kind of the point where uh, I kind of lost it for the album. I, I do really like this album but this is kind of like one of the records that is kind of like uh, it's overshadowed because it's you know in between your heart and I will follow and another famous song. So this song honestly uh, it is pretty much my least favorite because I just don't really have something with this song. Um, yeah, so I just don't really have anything with this song and it's just there, honestly. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Then we get Crooked Teeth. This is a kind of an edgy song. It's uh, pretty heavy for um, for Death Cap standards. And actually, my least favorite track so far and this track is co-written by uh, Walla. I'm not even sure Walla, uh, Chris Walla. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not the bass, by the way. Um, yeah, so Crooked Teeth is pretty nice. So it's pretty nice song. It's like ferocious. It's catchy. <coughs> Fucking hell. <coughs> Sorry. It's catchy. It's captivating. It's not dying. <laughs> Fucking hell. 
Uh, Kuka Teach yeah, is just like a feisty, kind of catchy, in your face, kind of fun song to listen to. I really like it. Yeah, it's another one of, my, one of my favorites, if I can fucking speak. And yeah, I, I do think it's an overall pretty captivating song, pretty nice to listen to, and just an overall nice song. Then we got what Sarah said, and this is actually uh, the longest song of the record, 6 minutes and 21 seconds, which was written by Ben Gibbard and Nick Harmer, the, the bass of the band. And honestly, this was a pretty nice song, it's 6 minutes long, but it didn't really bore me, honestly. Uh, they're just talking about what this girl said to the guys, or just to a guy in general. And how, how a guy feels, it, uh, how a guy feels, how, you know, they feel in that situation. Uh, it's, it's just kind of like an interesting song to listen to. I cannot really explain it because it is one of those songs to listen to for yourself. Then we get, I'm kind of full, fuck no. And then we get Brothers on the Hotel Bed and this is kind of like, um, it gives me kind of an Elvis vibe because it has that crooning sad voice but it also has kind of a rhythm to it. So this was a very nice song to, uh, to hear, to just jam out to and just enjoy. Uh, yeah, and I did really like it. It is a very um, out there song. Um, yeah, so I did really like it. Um, there's not really anything to say honestly than that. It's just kind of like an Elvis tribute, I suppose. So there we go. You know, before I sound too much like a broken record. Then we got Stable Song. Uh, this was solely written by, um, what's his name, Ben Gibbard. I already forgot it. But this was a nice outro song. I actually confused this song with Start Again, which I believe I also uh, heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe I listened to this track the last time. And Stable Song is kind of like in that same regard as Start Again. So these songs are kind of similar. Although I'm not going to count Start Again. That was the last song I listened to because I was kind of confused with the track listing. The Stable Song is the last original song on the record. I'm not going to talk about the uh, vinyl, Japanese or iTunes uh, bonus tracks because that's not really my thing, honestly. You know, if, if those are supposedly good tracks, then why didn't they make the original cut? That's what I think, but whatever. Uh, but Stable Song, it is a pretty stable song. It is pretty mellow. It's kind of like a personal fan favorite, I suppose. It's kind of a personal song of Ben Gibbard, so... Yeah, I really like this uh, song, I really like this album, uh, it's pretty solid for what it is, it is a ni nice closing song, stable song, you know, it's st uh, slow and steady as the race goes, I suppose, so it, it is a safe but good song to end it on, to end, to, yeah, to end it on, I actually said it right and I wanted to fuck it up, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, I like the majority of this record, um, yeah, I would say the entirety of side one is pretty much perfect. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> the majority of side two is pretty good too. I don't really mind uh, anything honestly. Someday you, you you will be loved if is my least favorite of the album. If, if I can fucking speak once more. Um, length is good. Forty four minutes twenty five seconds is not too long. It's not short, so that's kind of nice. Uh, the only problem I have with the record is that it's kind of boring honestly. I don't really see myself listening to this again, but uh, who knows, one day. I do like Def Cap, so I I do uh, pick, want to pick this record up again, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it, you know. It is nice, you know, if, if somebody would recommend me listening to Def Cap, I would do that, but um, yeah, there we go, it's a good record. Um, yeah, uh, upsides, a lot of great songs, a lot of classics, a lot of like consistency to the record. Downside, uh, it's kind of boring and there's one bad track on there in my opinion and it's not as good as Trent said but it's still like their second best so I'm gonna give this record an 8.6. It's a good record, I like it a lot, uh, you know it's not the greatest thing ever but it's still pretty solid so. Uh, yeah, there we go, that's my opinion on the record, 8.6 is still a really good rating so fuck off. And I was actually looking through, you know, I recently reviewed um, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot by uh, Wilco. Like, I'm really getting into Wilco right now, and their latest album cover is amazing. Uh, Schmilko. Like, yeah, they combined their name with a meme, I suppose. Look at this album cover right here. <laughs> this is arguably one of my all-time favorite album covers at the moment. 
<laughs> like I love the meme around this. I'm not sure how this meme is called, but they might they might have created it honestly because this was in 2016, so three years ago. And I'm, I'm not sure how old this meme is. I, I think it's older than three years though, but I don't know. And then uh, the back over too, with just the guy getting an execute. Do I want to show this because it is a bit vile though? Yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah, I like this picture. So, I love this album cover right here. <laughs> like, it's so memeable, it's so funny. So, uh, Def Cap, you're a good band. I'm gonna let you finish. But look, it's one of the best album covers of all time. But, uh, no kidding though, I love this cover. But, that transept lent to the the transept lenticism cover is it's a great cover but fuck that title honestly fuck that fucking title but uh, there we go i listen to wilco great band listen to death cap good band you know i don't mind them so there we go uh so thank you for watching this video uh listen to this record i'm in love with it right now oh the back cover is great too yankee hotel it's a fun title to Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. And um, the, the back cover is amazing in my opinion. Like just with the hotel and with the white backdrop. I, I love that. I love this album. I guess it's a real grower on me. So I think Wilco is, uh, they will become one of my favorite bands, you know, if I listen to them more. But Yankee Hotel is definitely like their peak and that album is amazing. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think about. Um, Death Cap or Wilco for that matter. I'm getting into Wilco right now, so there we go. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think about the record. Let me know what you think about Wilco in the comments down below. Love one of them, like one of them. Uh, well, I think I already spoiled that, but uh, let me know which one I think, you, you think which one is. I never got a comment anyway, so I'm not even sure why I'm, why I'm still talking. I'm not even sure why I'm still making videos, but update on that later. Uh, yeah, so thank you for watching this video, uh, the other things I just said for the thousandth time, and yeah, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and from Feeders Live, if you didn't say it already, and peace.